Worldwide Hippies presents Hippie News and Stuff with Winston Smith and the Worldwide Hippies News Team. Welcome to Hippie TV News and Stuff for the week of June 26th. Brought to you by WorldwideHippies.com. News, commentary, and entertainment from citizen journalists around the globe. WorldwideHippies.com. Media produced by the people, for the people. I am Winston Smith. Rooftop occupation kicks off. Fox in a Priory, Mystery of Stonehenge is solved, Doc says you can still fuck with them on Election Day, Insta Karma Files, our asshole of the week, and more. Here's our top story. From Op-Ed News, TPP is BFD and no, I don't stutter. George Orwell must have cried last night. Had he not warned them, hadn't they read his books once taught in high schools across America? He was so clear, yet so few listen. Now, the plot is almost over, and yes, the pigs are about to win. Unless, unless we can stop Congress from ratifying TPP by late summer this year. To the point, TTP is Trans-Pacific Partnership, the proposed Pan-Pacific Treaty promoted and signed off on by Barack Obama. This is likely the most insidious piece of corporate global legislation ever to be secretly slipped through the halls of Congress. It was a secret until two weeks ago. Now, corporate media, the White House, and all of Congress are playing look over here game with Eric Holder's Contempt of Congress show. The idea is to keep the story about TPP out of the news. This underhanded legislation, treaty, secretly sells out the American people's legal right in favor of the corporate puppet masters. The concept, inception, and mechanism of TPP treaty comes solely from the Obama administration and it will create a new worldwide corporate dynasty. TPP gives up legal sovereignty and jurisdiction of the United States and its laws to a foreign power. Corporations will literally be able to circumvent the existing laws of the EPA, FDA, unions, collective bargaining agreements, patent protections and access, banking regulations, and many other American regulations and rights. All will be negated solely by the arbitrary dictates of corporate beings currently and secretly included in the language of the TPP Treaty. Should state, local, or federal government agencies attempt to enforce American laws in favor of American citizens, a separate corporate court will have supreme jurisdiction over that American governmental agency. This tribunal has the power to override existing American regulations, federal agencies, state governments, city authorities, citizens' properties, and small business law. Should a defendant choose not to comply with a tribunal's dictate or refuse to pay the tribunal-ordered financial compensation to any multinational corporation, the judgment will be enforced by our federal government against American citizens' interests. Making matters even worse, Small American-based businesses will not have access to the authoritarian controls and manipulations of the TPP Treaty. These luxuries are only available to the big multinational corporations. Smaller American corporations will be subservient to the whims of TPP, just as individual citizens will be. So, for example, if Monsanto poisons your child and you sue in U.S. courts, Monsanto doesn't really even have to show up. If you somehow win your suit, the United States government will not be legally able to help you in any way to collect it. Also, Monsanto can then take that judgment to the secret tribunal and actually claim that you are causing a technical barrier to trade, and they want monetary damages from you. In that case, the United States government is bound by the TPP laws to collect it from you in any way possible. Please, people, do your homework on this one and educate yourselves soon more about TPP, and let your congressman know that you will not stand for this treaty, and don't wait, time is short. And this, a large balloon banner reading eviction stop here was deployed above the embattled home of the Cruz family, as 15 supporters of the Cruz family began an occupation of the rooftop in protest of the family's unjust foreclosure. By 8.30 a.m., two were cut out of a lockbox device with an electric saw handcuffed, taken down a ladder, and arrested for trespassing. Arrested by the state, even though no complaint of trespassing was formally made. Actually, the Cruises still legally own their property. Yes, they still own it. The PNC Bank has acknowledged that the foreclosure was due to their bank error, but they want their property anyway. The Cruz family is seeing that the law means nothing when a corporation wants to fuck with you or take an action. 
and this action kicks off a national week of action in 18 cities demanding PNC Bank negotiate with the family to allow them to return to their home. But the police thought it was just as important to set an example to other homeowners that they are now the new brown shirts for the corporatocracy. That even though the cruises are set to lose their own home, illegally, it's the cruises who are the criminals. And that a monopoly on violence will always be in the hands of the governments and at the whims of the corporations. So what can you do? Will your vote change anything? Here's the doc to tell you what he thinks. <laughs> What you've got? Well, I Winstone and hippies everywhere. Thanks for the kind words. Bugs, you know how we do. At my back, I always hear time's winged chariot hurrying near. That was the Cavalier poet Sir Andrew Marvell beseeching his coy mistress to relinquish her favors and succumb to his ardor. It is the archetype of that trope named Carpe Diem, Seize the Day. But it also, I think, may characterize how many American voters are beginning to feel with the inevitable necessity of voting for president looming ever larger. The choices are horrible and time is running out. Yet, yeah, well, it'll be on us in a twinkling and it will last forever. Of course, since 2000, there have been an apparent and largely uninvestigated irregularities in the conduct and counting of our vote. In numerous states, in at least two of the last three presidential elections, these imputations of dishonesty, if not outright vote rigging and misconduct, have somewhat tarnished the luster of our American birthright, that right to vote, which our brave soldiers and airmen have carried overseas with bombs and rifle bullets for the last two or three decades now, actually longer than that. It's our sacred trust. No, well, no, really, but it occurred to me that when all is said and done, it is the act of voting itself which matters, it is, is meaningful. Not for whom the vote is cast, especially not in national elections where at least as we've said, the vote has at least possibly been stolen in two of the last three elections. It's a, a myth that any single ballot matters. The count is only in the aggregate, and the importance is regulated by the degree of dispersal of the individual vote. Nobody's individual ballot is, uh, makes a damn bit of difference nationally. It's really only completely symbolic. That's why this year I'm encouraging people to vote ABD, anybody but the duopolists, anybody other than the approved candidates of the GOP and the Dems. So if you really, really, really want to vote for Ron Paul, now's the time to do it. Let me encourage you. In fact, or Rocky Anderson or Cynthia McKinney or Jill Stein or your local weatherman. Hell, I want to write in Budrow the dog. The, uh, the tactic seems to me to be preferable to abstaining for the single reason that as things stand, nobody notices when you just blow it off. There's no record of your disenchantment. What I'd really like to see is a significant turnout in the none of these above category. Um, the expedient is on ballots in Nevada, it's only one state where you can just say no. Uh, that it would be nice to achieve about a 10% number actually of, of no-sayers, but that's incredibly unlikely. The four top non-duopoly vote-getters in the 2008 managed to capture fewer than 2 million votes out of more than 131 million cast. And the total votes for all non-duopolist candidates in 2008 amounted to less than about 1.5% of the total. The beauty of this plan, however, is that from the individual voter's perspective, it amounts to having two votes, legally and doing it legally. Uh, one for your favorite dreamy idealist or racist scumbag candidate, and one explicitly and unambiguously against the candidates of empire. So go forth, hippies. Swing that ballot. Vote your conscience. and Vote enthusiastically, if you must, for the Flying Monkey Party or the Tree Hugger Party or Ron Paul. Here's your chance. It's the only way to go on record as being disgusted with the choices they give you and to be secure in the knowledge that it doesn't really matter at all. We can talk about the returns and swill whiskey when I see you at the beach. <laughs> Bye, hippies. Thanks, Doc. You get my vote, man. Big news in all the papers and online last week, the mystery of Stonehenge is solved. Without exception, all major media outlets ran this headline and article, almost word for word, but with different authors. The story? Scientists say Stonehenge was built by a lot of people working together. And that there always will be some people who just don't believe that. Well, believe me, when a purse snatcher thought a petite young woman would give up her purse easily, he learned quick that looks can be deceiving. See for yourself in this week's Instant Karma Files. This is karma's gonna get you. Gonna knock you down.
Reminds me of my wedding night. And this, after Worldwide Hippies News and Stuff exposed a corrupt and skullduggery operation going on in the Vatican recently, the Holy See hired a real expert in public relations to spin the story in the corporate media. To resent the corrupt, money-hoarding, old lady-manipulating, devil-worshipping, war-starting, witch-burning, baby-raping holy men as victims of privacy invasion. And who did they hire to do it? Well, they hired Greg Burke, Fox News correspondent and journalistic cockroach. He says his job will be to shape the message, mold the message, and make sure everyone in the corporate control media remains on message. In return, the Vatican will make sure to promote Fox News to the masses and Mitt Romney as the new messiah. Oh, I hear it's time for the asshole of the week. And this week it goes to the so-called liberal media. Their complicity in presenting the Eric Holder controversy as a political witch hunt. Republicans and Democrats alike are lying to the American people when they talk about the fast and furious gun-running scheme that had been set into play by the Justice Department. Nothing new there, but the liberal media, in particular, is also lying to the American people. But the truth is still the truth, even if the liberal corporate media wants you to think otherwise. And here's a little bit of the truth. Both Republicans and Democrats have for decades used the so-called war on drugs as a political tool for promoting whoever is in office as being tough on crime. That the war on drugs, just like the war on terror, is a war never to be won. And the corporations profit from it by selling armaments, surveillance equipment, border fencing, drones, and other things. The politicians, they get a cause to love every voting year as well as an excuse for furthering the militarization of the police state. You can read a repost of the Truth Out article on Worldwide Hippies titled How the U.S. Government, Banks, Prison, Industrial Complex, Corrupt Officials, Businesses, Law Enforcement, Racists, and the CIA Profit from the Illegal Drugs. Again, you can read that article on WorldwideHippies.com or on Truth Out website. Continuing, George W. Bush, war criminal and slaughterer of children, started the program of making available assault weapons to drug cartel soldiers. One way to keep the war going is to sell arms to both sides. When Barack Obama came into office, he was made aware of the illegal sale of weapons and along with fetch and step Eric Holder, gave it a new name. Now it's called Fast and Furious. Both G.W. Bush, slaughterer of old women, and Barack Obama have said the goal of the program was to follow the guns and hope to find the drug pins. Yeah. Once the guns were across the border to Mexico, they vanished. No one has ever been arrested in Mexico for gun running. No one. But to Congress, both presidents presented the program as being effective. Congress, without any proof of its effectiveness and knowing the actions were illegal, repeatedly funded the program. Both parties. Both. The United States of America is truly lawless when it comes to the elite. Eric Holder and Barack Obama are just as guilty as the Bush administration of murder. Yes, murder. How many of the over 60,000 innocent people murdered in the Mexican so-called war on drugs were killed by these United States government-supplied weapons? No one knows. No one. But the so-called liberal pundits, reporters, and talk show hosts they know the truth, they know the whole story, and they choose for political reasons to spin and misrepresent it. Above all, Obama must be re-elected. Randy G. Rich and famous people like me Rhodes, Fart Tart Ed Schultz, Double Talking Tom Hartman, Stephanie Bathroom Humor Horror Miller, and the rest of you so-called liberal progressive media keep drinking the rancid blood lace Kool-Aid. And take your places with all the other worldwide hippies, assholes of the week. That's it for this week's show. Please visit WorldWideHippies.com for real news and commentary and show your support by visiting our store or make a donation so we can keep up the howl for peace and justice. And you will see us here next week.